Today on Hoopy Doodle, we dance with an inanimate object, we paint some letters, and we make a hook. So I picked up an 8 ton air hydraulic ram at Harbor Freight, a used tubing bender, and a used tubing roller. And my plan is to have not just the bender on this, but also back in the recesses here, the Hoopy Doodle Garage, we have a roller, a tubing roller. And so I want to have the roller and the bender comboed onto one stand. To do it, we've got some two by two square tubing here, a bunch of that. We've got some in 11 gauge wall and some in 14 gauge wall. So I'm using my trusty abrasive saw to cut some 45 degree ends on these tubes. And this is going to form the base of my cart. I'm going to drill some holes in here as well so that I can then thread on some caster wheels. And here I'm using one of my favorite tools, which is my welding table. I've got some great clamps I made for this table that help me hold everything down. And then the holes are drilled precisely on this thing so that everything lines up perfectly at 90 degrees, which makes squaring out bases like this a lot easier. I've got my Deluxe Super Saw number three. This is just a bandsaw table and I'm using this to cut out some 3 16 of an inch plate, which I'm gonna double up by welding it together to make some much thicker braces. And these braces are going to be used to hold the hydraulic ram onto the base of the cart. And so in order to get these things straight and make sure that they're exactly the same, I'm going to have basically two braces, one on either side of the ram. I've got four pieces here, clamping them together in a vise. I'm going to weld them together. Then I'm going to drill my hole through them and shape them out all at the same time so that they're, so that they're all exactly the same. Then I'll break it apart and then we'll weld them onto the actual base of the cart. Now my tubing bender came with some three quarter inch thick bolts that are meant to hold this thing on to a tabletop. And these benders are typically used in a horizontal fashion, but I am fabricating my stand so this will be used in a vertical fashion. So I'm testing these bolts to make sure they line up correctly on my uprights to which I'm going to mount the bender. These are three quarter inch in diameter and they're 12 inches long. bender is not light so to make it easier for me to weld this onto the base I want it to stand straight up and so that I don't have to hold this thing I'm using some ratchet straps to hold this thing to some shelving and that'll help keep it upright while I can align it to the base and weld it on and I've never made a bender like this thing before so I really wanted to make sure that everything lined up correctly and I had some questions about how much this ram would move as the bender went through its motions I knew the ram would move to a degree up and down a little bit and so I wasn't sure how much and how much clearance I would actually need on this and how everything would sort of line up and work out. So I wanted to sort of put everything in place as best I could before I welded everything up.
test drive of this thing. A proof of concept. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's see what happens. So with that concept sort of proven at this point, it does work. Nothing, uh, there's no conflicts here where it doesn't run into anything at any point. And that's something I was definitely worried about when I was making this or trying to design this thing was that I was worried that this would run into the, the wall here, but this really doesn't move very much at all. And then I was also worried about any kind of binding up in here that that would you know, work and how far this would extend and all that sort of stuff. So my design seems to have worked out the way I want it. So my next step is now to reinforce. So um, I want to triangulate this thing. Ideally, I wanted to triangulate it on this side, but this really conflicts with that. So I'm going to triangulate it on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out some more pieces to go from here to here. All right, so to figure out what angles I need, I'm going to use this guy, this little angle finder. And then I've got this other piece of tubing that I'm going to put on here and sort of give me a rough idea at the moment. I think I need like a 60-30 angle. So then I'm going to use this guy. See it moves like so. I'm going to stick this up in here. What that is and that looks like it's about a 60 degree angle. And then same down here. All right so then my saw does not cut to 60. It goes up to 45. So to get a 60 degree angle on here, I first set my little gauge here to 60, and now I'm gonna set it up on here, sort of mark this as best I can. Now with the bender pretty much done, that was my major concern was getting this bender correct. Now we're on to fabricating our place for the tubing roller to go. And this is basically just a platform that's going to sit on the other side of the cart. And it's for this tubing roller that I used the 14 gauge, the thinner wall tube for this. Everything for the bender, I used 11 gauge wall because I needed that to be stronger. I've cut out some sheet stock to make some caps for the ends of these tubes. I weld this on and then I'm going to grind it off and then the flap disc to make it nice and smooth. And then here I'm welding some nuts to the bottom of the legs there so that my casters can thread up through those nuts. And this is what they call a captive nut. Now I have some leftover 3 16 of an inch plate here from when I built this bandsaw table. I'm gonna use this to make my platform. I've drilled out some big holes there to bolt the roller to, and we're gonna weld this thing on and bolt that sucker down. I'm not one to overlook the opportunity for storage and so I can see the bottom of this cart here. Great place to put a little floor just in case I need to set something on it. So I have some leftover grating for my shelving. I'm cutting out a piece of that and welding it to the bottom of this cart.
we've got several dies for the roller, the tubing roller, as well as the tubing bender. And I'm going to incorporate little hangers onto the cart itself to hang these dies. And to do that, I've got some half inch round stock. So and on the end wide. of the round stock, before I weld it onto the cart, I'm going to drill a little hole that will allow me to put a little hitch pin or a cotter pin type thing through there to help hold the dies on there. So if I'm rolling this cart along at a high speed with lots of torque action, the dies won't fall off. a standard welding magnet to help hold the half inch rod at a 90 degree angle on the cart as I weld this on. All right, so we've got our bender slash tubing roller done got it all painted now we've got our hand lettering done on it now it's time to put it together all right so on our hydraulic ram here the diameter of this hole on the ram this is five eighths and then the diameter of the hole on the tubing bender is actually one half and so i'm going to drill this out to five eighths and we'll put a five eighths inch bolt through everything and we'll be good there. I'm also gonna add some spacers. These guys right here, picked them up at the local hardware store, big box hardware, this is 5 8 inch spacers. I'm gonna end up having to cut this. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and use my step drill to countersink this thing a little bit to clean up the edges on the outside. All right, so now our 5 8 inch bolt should slide right in there real nice. i play with this ram here, get this on the right side. All right, now we gotta figure out our spacers. So we want spacers on either side there, so this thing doesn't move back and forth. We want it to be nice and centered. Figure out what we got here. Let's try to bend something here. I currently got a one inch die in here. This is a one inch tube with a 16 gauge wall. So it's a fairly thin wall. Let's see what we can do here. A test bend. 
Alright, I'm gonna mark stuff with the marker. Trying to get an idea. I'm gonna mark where the die starts on the tube. So I have an idea of what what to expect on this thing. Alright, I'm gonna set my little dial here. Set that to zero and now let's plug this thing in and see if we can see if we can do some damage. Hook up my air hose. I realized before this test bend that I really wanted to have some sort of spring pullback mechanism on here and I've gone and looked at garage door springs as an option. I just haven't quite figured out how to mount them yet on here to make this work because I don't have a lot of space between my uprights that hold the bender and the hydraulic ram itself. So I can't really fit two springs on either side of the ram, which is kind of what I'd like to do. So I'm gonna think on this a little bit more and maybe someday I'll come up with a solution for this. But until then, gotta muscle it, man. Gotta muscle it. Check that out. Totally made a hoop. I might have gone. I think that's like a perfect 180, I think. I think, man, look at it. Pretty cool. I think it's for one, might be slightly past 180. But in terms of a bend, dude, this is nice and smooth. This looks really good. There's maybe a slight, slight kink right there, man. Like slightly indentation right there around the die. But man, this is really nice. I'm very happy with that. So that's it for my combo tubing bender roller. If you liked this video, if you thought it was cool, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, throw some comments down, be my internet friend, all that stuff. It helps out the channel, helps us do cool stuff. And speaking of cool stuff, we're building a motorcycle frame with this tubing bender. That's kind of why we got this thing. So if you like that, go check that out. I'm in the middle of building a Grom chopper, basically. And so check that out. We're in the middle of that build. It's coming along. We're just getting to the point where we're going to put it on the frame jig next and start making the frame for this. So tubing bender comes into play. You get to see this thing in action. And then also I want to make an engine guard for my other motorcycle, which is this motorcycle right here, which I'm kind of trying to do a scrambler type thing with this. I would like to have a little engine guard that goes down here. So I need to bend some tubing from this engine mount up here, this frame mount, and I'm going to have it come down and underneath the bike like that. And so we're going to be using the tubing bender for that project as well. So stay tuned for that at a future date. So thanks for watching, everybody. Keep on wrenching on your own projects, and we'll see you next time.